Hi, I'm Gary M0TIG here at Martin Lynch & Sons and today I'm talking about the baby loop and who is this actually good for? And if you're thinking about buying a loop, some of the pitfalls that you might come across as, as and when you sort of set one of these up and the questions that I'm asked most. Okay, so let's have a quick look at just how this actually works. So let me just reset that. So what we what you would do as soon as you get this loop is you've, you've got it up and you, you want to get this to actually run. What you do is you press and hold the minus button, then use the plus and minus buttons here to go through the the antenna um, the, or the, the menu until you actually get to set antenna type. At this point you just press enter and then you can select um, antenna type auto detect. If for any reason that that fails then what you might need to do is look at where you've located the loop. Is there anything affecting the way the loop's trying to sort of set itself up? Now it will fail in here because it's, we've got all sorts of lights and you know tubes and air conditioning and all sorts of things just above it. It's not in a perfect location at all. And the fact that it works in here is actually amazing. So let me just go back to that for you. And there are some other choices on there as well that you may be interested to see. If you press and hold the minus button, you can go through, you can set it for full auto, and that is when you need the, the RS232 port. Um, and you need to choose the type of radio as well. And you can just, well, I'm just using the plus and minus here to go through it. You can set a semi-auto, and you can set a type uh, full auto, or set semi-auto. Well, I'm gonna set it at semi-auto in this particular type, uh, particular, um, situation just by printing that and it says auto mode disabled that's fine and it saved the mode so now at this point it should be ready to go so let's just test it um, what I would do to check it is press and hold the oblique button there and then if you just put in a frequency I'll put in say 14500 and say enter it won't do anything you'll get the tuning light come on and then what you do is if you press 9 that should open. Okay, and three then should close the loop. So I'll repeat that. Nine, nine should open. Okay, and then three should close the loop. And there are also some, uh, some buttons here which will also do slow or macro type um, thing. Now to get out of the manual mode, all you simply do is press the backspace and then that will go back into its sort of kind of idle state. To use the auto mode, if you press and um, hold the, the, the star button, then put in your frequency, we'll put in say 14500, and then enter. This should now start tuning. And it's given us an SWR of 2.4, but like I said, in here, I'm surprised it even gets that close. So you can kind of see quickly just how this sort of works. If for any reason it gets stuck at any of its extremes, so if it's fully open, fully closed, whatever, and you want to get out of that, all you need to do is just press the manual. Okay, put in any old frequency, it doesn't matter. And then press enter, the little red light will come on. And if it's fully open, then press three. And it will bring it in so it's in the middle again. If it's fully closed, then press nine and open it till it's in the middle again. And then what you do is just press the backspace and that's kind of reset the, the, the positioning. They do get a little confused every now and again. The controller's not, you know, superhuman. It's not a robot or anything like that. It, it really, it's just a very simple, very basic little motor controller. And, and that's that. So let's get tucked into the questions. Right, okay, the, one of the big questions that I'm asked is can, uh, can you paint the loop? Well, the answer is yes, you can paint the loop. It's a bare aluminium. It's, it comes sort of self-colour. And what you need to do is get a, a, a good quality professional aluminium primer. So what I would do is um, follow the instructions for the, whatever primer you use. Um, and then you can actually just uh, paint it in the, in the usual way. But make sure that you clean it just prior to actually painting it. So, but follow the instructions on, on whatever primer, and then you can paint it whichever color you like. It can be anything. Paint doesn't have any effect on the RF. So yes, you can paint it. Um, the next question um, is about maintenance. I'm asked how much maintenance should you actually do on these loops? 
Well, I normally recommend sort of, you know, three to six months sort of intervals. Just keep an eye on it, keep it clean. And anything that needs grease or oil or whatever, then, then do that. And make sure there's no water ingress and, you know, no sort of corrosion forming. So like the spots that actually occasionally get a little bit of corrosion are the ends here. And you can actually put some, uh, something like silicon grease on those just to keep the water out. Um, and the rest of it really is pretty much, you know, sort of uh, maintenance free, but just keep an eye on it for corrosion and water ingress. Now, the other question that I get asked a lot is, um, what type of grease should I use on some of these parts, especially around the joints? Um, well, in particularly around the sort of joints where these, these parts go on. Well, what you really need is a, a high conductive grease, something like the Electrolube uh, type of grease, which is got a very high copper sort of content and, and works very, very well for actually joining two, two surfaces together. So just a good quality, high conductive grease on these sort of parts here. Everything else um, around here pretty much can be a standard type of grease on, on the actual joints, that's absolutely fine. Um, the other question that I'm asked is about the DC motor supply cable. What type of cable should I use? Well, the answer is just a, a good quality, heavy duty DC cable would be absolutely fine. And I often say something like, uh, you know, 2.5 um, Arctic cable is really, really good, um, especially sort of in the garden. It seems to last quite a while, but just make sure you clearly mark uh, on it, obviously that it's DC or whatever. Um, but this, uh, the red and black um, DC cable is absolutely perfect. And this is uh, almost like a 2.5 millimeter here. Um, just nice, big and chunky over for a long run. And that's absolutely perfect. You can run that in a bit of water pipe or something like that to protect it. That's absolutely fine. Um, in the same way, cables, do I need to um, have a particular type of coax? Well, the answer is no, you don't. Any old coax will do. Um, RG58, RG8 Mini, uh, 213, whatever you've got really laying around. A bit of Ultraflex 7, of course. Um, are absolutely perfect. It's HF, it's, it's not that, uh, that fussy. If you're gonna send this for long runs, you might wanna put sort of something that's got a good um, protective sort of case or something like the, one of the berry cables or something like that, because obviously it's, it's going along the ground. You wanna protect it as best you can. So, but any coax is absolutely fine. That's not a problem. Okay, so the next question was, um, do I need a tuner? And the answer is no. The, this box will do all the heavy lifting basically. It's got a motor controller in there, which it, it's, a, it's a noise bridge. What it will do is it will send a pulse. It measures the SWR when it sends the pulse and it then will adjust the motor accordingly till it gets the right SWR. So the answer to that is no, you don't want a, want a tuner engaged. And quite often one of the things that comes back to us is that the box is showing a low SWR but my radio is seeing a high SWR, and that's usually because the customer's left the, the tuner engaged. So the answer is no, you want to disable your tuner in your radio. Um, the next one was, how tight should the hinge pin be? Um, this, I've had a couple of questions on this. You want to really just tighten this up until your elbows clicks, basically. It, it wants to be you know, reasonably tight. Um, the other question that I've had is, should I use any, any um, Loctite or anything like that? You could do, I suppose, but just don't use the permanent one. So that's the, the most important thing there. But they just need to be tight and to make sure that that's got your uh, good quality grease on it, whether or not it's your, your conductive grease or a standard grease. So conductive grease goes under these plates. That one there can be a standard grease. Do I need a rotator now the answer to this one is not quite as simple as it, as it sounds a loop typically if it has a something like a parasitic loop inside will transmit pretty much evenly you know front or back or front and back whichever you like but these use a gamma match type um, connection so there is a mild bias in that direction so the other question linked to this is, 
which way do these transmit? Well, they, they roll in the direction that they transmit. So this is technically the front of the loop and it's, it's transmitting in that direction. And this is say the back of the loop and it's transmitting also in that direction. So it's transmitting 180 degrees with a slight bias that way. So do you need a rotator? Well, the answer is yes, because the good thing about these things is they've got a very narrow queue. So if you were to rotate them, you can actually null out the noise because from this direction, they've got, they're very deaf. So you could turn this so it faces the noise and is almost transmitting in the sort of rough direction. The takeoff angle is kind of, you know, pretty much every angle possible. Um, so that is their advantage. Um, the, also, I suppose, linked to that sort of question is how efficient are they? They are not very efficient at all. I think, you know, when you're talking about these sorts of bands, a loop this size is very, very small. So, um, no, they're not particularly efficient. However, they do have some really big advantages, especially if you, you, you've got a compromised sort of situation where you can't put any big antennas up. Next. Um, we talked about the directivity. Do they work? The answer is yes. We get loads and loads of customers saying how well they work and um, the, the contacts that they've made. You know, they've, they've worked countries they've never worked before. So the answer to that question is a very short yes, they do work. Um, but again, it's down to your location as well a little bit and how you set them up where they're sort of, if you've got like uh, a lot of metallic objects in the vicinity, this can have a big effect. If you've got other aerials, these will kind of um, basically connect to them. So you want to make sure that there's nothing influencing the, the loop at all and, and that you have no troubles. Um, the other question I get asked is, can I upgrade my controller? But so bear with a second, I've got one over here. Um, this is the Mark I controller. And some of the questions I get asked are, can I upgrade from this to the new Mark II controller? Well, the answer is yes, you can. So, um, so they're on our website. They're, they're not cheap, but you can do it. So that's not a problem. Um, firmware. Updating the firmware on the Mark II controller is really easy. It's not possible, as far as I know, on the Mark I. What you do is you disconnect the key uh, pad, put a, a blank USB pen, which you then download the firmware from the, uh, from the Ciro website, put it on the USB pen, plug the USB pen on, and then all you do is you just plug the connector in the back and turn it on, and it will go absolutely mad. So you just basically pull that little connector out the back there and then just plug it in. And what will happen, it will go absolutely nuts on the front and that will be the firmware updating to the latest one. And they, they do update the firmware quite a lot. So, um, which is really, really good for all of the new firmwares that happen to, to come out for the different radios. So what else have we got? Um, how long can cables be? And, well, it, it doesn't really matter too much how long cables are. Um, I would try and, you might need to experiment with lengths of, of cable because that may have an effect on how well the, 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 tune, the, the loop works. And that's, I suppose, something else I should mention is that these loops, once they're in a location, depending on how, how happy they are, is the, the you know, is, is the, res, is, is shown in the result that you get. If you if you get one to one matches on all of the over the, the spread of you know the, what they're capable of, then then that's fantastic. You've got a happy loop. But if you find yourself with a, a loop that's not quite tuning perfectly, you might want to experiment with lengths of cable, different cables, and that sort of thing, just to see if it makes a difference. I have known these to to have. Um, you know, a, a, a hissy when, when someone's put the wrong type of cable on there, or I say wrong type of cable, um, or put a cable on it, it just doesn't like. I've had it before, um, and you just basically have to change the cable to a shorter one, slightly longer one, whatever. You might just need to do a bit of experimentation, but it doesn't really matter that much. Um, obviously, longer lengths, probably put a bit of better cable on, to be honest. 
So, what else? Um, right, okay, so the newer type of PSU down here, this is a later type of PSU, it's, a, it's like a, a laptop type of um, PSU. The earlier ones were more of a, a wall wart type of affair where they would actually, the power supply was a, was a linear type power supply which then plugged into the wall. Um, these now have got like a, a switch mode type of power supply. Yes, um, I'm sure that this may or may not have um, an effect on your received uh, you know, signal. Maybe there's a bit of noise, but we've not sort of seen anything within in the, the spec of the antenna. So, you know, so they're, they're pretty good. But the newer type of power supplies, that's those. If you've got an older one, um, because they changed it. These are a two amp power supply. The originals were a one amp power supply. If you, if you find that your loop is starting to become a bit sluggish or whatever, do give us a shout. We do sell these power supplies um, now. They're 24 volt, two amp power supplies. We do keep them. Again, just check on our website. Um, ah, RS232 cables. Um, we don't sell RS232 cables here. We've kind of taken the, the view of it. We, you can buy them on Amazon for probably £1.95. Um, and all you really need is an RS232 uh, cable, which is straight through. So that's serial to serial cable. And yes, the new Mark II controllers do come um, with the uh, RS232 board fitted just in there. Um, there is also, an, um, I think it's a, an RS48 something a connector there. I've not actually seen what that's for yet, but I'm sure there must be a use, maybe some ro remote sort of control or something like that. But this particular board now, the, the RS232 board, is now included in the new controllers and all of the new loops. So what else? We're coming to the end. Um, the fact that is the end. If you, if you want me to um, answer any specific questions, then please do email us support at hamradio.co.uk. Um, I'll do my very best to, to answer the questions. And if I can't answer it, then the lovely lady at uh, Ciro will be able to, to give me some information, I'm sure. Um, repairs and things like that on, on the controllers. We're finding a little bit of uh, um, delay now on some of the components. Um, so, you know, if you if you need any repairs done or anything like that, do do um, let us know um, and be prepared just for a little bit of a wait because we are waiting for components and stuff. Um, but other than that, that is the baby loop. There is also a midi loop which uh, goes from 40 through to 80, which is much much bigger. They are split into four as well, so they are quite a, a different beast. I absolutely love the baby loop. I think it's a really really good loop. Um, fantastic. Um, I would have one myself instantly. It's, it's really, really good. It would suit me down to the ground. I have a small garden and that's exactly what they're for. So thanks for watching. Um, I probably, I don't know if I'll see you next week, but um, thanks for watching. And if you need anything, do give us a call in store on 0345 230 599. Thanks.